Okay, it's got a few more things to get through today, and I'm really excited to talk to you about Signal R. Now, quick show of hands, who's heard of Signal R before? <laughs> well, all of you, that's unusual. <laughs> so, real time push notifications for Signal R. So, the idea of Signal R is before Signal R and WebSockets came along, um, pretty much most client server communication in web applications happened through this kind of cycle. Um, the client makes a request to the server, and the server gives something back. So that's fine whenever the client has in charge of the information flow. But what happens if the server has something new to tell the client? But it can't tell the client unless the client specifically asks for it. Let's contrast that with Signal R. So Signal R gives you a, a true two-way communication, so much more like a telephone, where the client can send information to the server whenever it gets it, and the server can send information to the client whenever the server has something to say. So this is a technology built on top of WebSockets. So WebSockets is a mechanism of a client making a connection to the server and leaving that connection open so the client can send information up and the server can send information up. That does also mean that the server has to maintain some resources to keep that connection open. So you don't get that for free. You need servers, you need some, some um, compute on the server to maintain that connection. So to make this work, there's kind of two libraries really. There's a client-side um, JavaScript library or TypeScript library, and there's a server-side bit to plug into ASP.NET Core. So the client-side library looks a bit like this, and this example is from TypeScript. We pull in ASP.NET signal at the top there, and we import this thing called a hub connection. And then at the start of our service, we create that hub connection. And then once we've got a hub connection established, we then have two chunks of code below here to actually work with it. One is sending information, the other one is sending information. So that open customer command there, that function, says this.hubconnection.invoke gives it a name and sends it a parameter. So that's sending, I want to open this customer record, sends the information down. So this next one, um, push customer list, that's receiving information. In this case, we're setting up a JavaScript handler that when SignalR has this event, we're going to call this message fat arrow callback function and actually do some work with it. And actually the work we're going to do is send it into, in this particular case, a um, NGRX store installed into Angular. But that's not the important bit. The important bit is we've got this library installed into TypeScript that can send messages up and receive messages coming back. Then on the server side, what we've got is this thing called hubs. So where controls, oh sorry, not controls, controllers and actions are your kind of MVC endpoint for receiving data or receiving a request and responding to requests. It's the hub in the SignalR libraries, Microsoft ASP, they call it SignalR, which is our endpoint for SignalR traffic. And so this can receive messages and also send messages. So in this quick example, we've got a async task called send message, and that's um, received every time someone sends a message in. And this particular example is more like a chat window where you've got lots of people in a chat room, a message comes in, and you just transmit that message back to all the other clients. So clients to all that send a sync, you can send to all clients connected to a particular hub. So that's really what I had to show you on SignalR. I could have a massive demo, but we're pretty short on time. I'm gonna move on to another new feature, which is gRPC. <coughs> so key points of SignalR, is SignalR gives you real-time async messaging to browsers. It uses WebSockets with a fallback to polling. And on the server side, you've got this hub idea on the server instead of your MVC controllers. Now, if you want to scale up SignalR to a massive scale, then there's a new Azure SignalR service that gives you that, that ability to scale that right up to many, many thousands of concurrent users. So that's SignalR. The next thing I'm going to show you is another new way of sending data to and from an ASP.NET server, and that's something called gRPC. So gRPC is slightly different because it's a whole new way of communicating with your server. So this is not SignalR hubs. This is not even REST APIs. In fact, it's not even normal HTTP requests. It uses HTTP2, and it's called gRPC. I think the G is still there from Google. It was a Google... Um, it was a, a Google uh, technology, but it's now become a standard, and it's a standard now supported by ASP.NET Core 3. So let's take a look at that. So to use, 
Let's turn that off. No. Let's make that my startup project. So to use gRPC, like most things, you get startup.cs. So it's one takeaway from today, startup.cs is where most things are kept. You can of course break up your startup.cs and, and distribute your setup elsewhere. And in startup.cs we had a couple of things. In the services, we have services.addgrpc. So once again, sticking with the pattern of you want to add a library, that library generally has an extension method to service collection that adds itself. So services.addgrpc. Then later on down the bottom, we've got a little bit of our endpoint configuration here. And what we're doing in this endpoint configuration is we're going to set up this thing called weather service. So we had two things in this sample. We had a to-do list and a weather service. So we're going to set up a gRPC service to respond to a request for weather information instead of a REST API. So how does gRPC work? Well, if you come to here, you see we've got this .proto file. And that's short for protobuf. So this is a Google um, syntax for um, a very, very highly performant uh, data transfer mechanism. So back in the days we had XML. And XML was great at being structurally correct, but was quite wordy, like the amount of markup to data was quite high. JSON improved that quite a bit, but you still got a little bit of overhead in JSON with um, value names in there. Protobuf protocol um, is much more optimized because it doesn't have any um, key value names in there. Everything's positional. So this is a protobuf file, and this format will be the same for using gRPC across any gRPC compliant code. So gRPC in Java, gRPC in PHP, they would all use this format to specify their gRPC file. So we've set up this service called weather service. It's got one external call with, and so this syntax is no longer C-sharp, but it's got this one external call called get weather that takes in something called a weather request and returns a weather response. We've got this definition of the weather request, a message that is an object called weather request and that has no parameters. We've also got this object called weather response that has a repeated list of weather items. And you see against each of these things are numbers. That's because the specification is data is positional. It's its position in number of bytes along in the message that says what the data is. So that's what makes it um, highly performant. So we create this file and automatically in the tooling, once we've created this protobuf file, this .proto file, we get generated a service base. So now I can come to my services here and say, not that one, gRPC, and create my own service and have it extend this weather service base. So this weather service base was generated for me by the tooling when I created this proto file. So that contains all this information. And then to implement that interface, I can inject in my uh, dependencies. So I've got a logger in there, and this media I think we'll cover later is how I can get to my control, my commands and queries. And then once again, because I've specified commands and queries, I can just fire those commands and queries from this get weather function. So everything inside here is just normal C-sharp code now. I'm just calling a request into my CQRS layer, taking the response and just copying that response into this weather item that was part of the definition from that protobuf file and just sending that result. One other thing you can do with this is you can have um, functions that return a single response or you can have a function that returns a stream of responses. So in that case, it will stay open and as new records get dropped in, it will just send them down the wire. So you can have permanently connected streaming data. So useful for, I mean, you could, you could probably build a um, video streaming system from this, you know, lots of data being streamed efficiently down the system just by putting the word stream in front of the result here. So with that in place, we have now got a service. So how do we serve up this service? Well, what you can't do is ping this with a web browser because this is not a HTTP REST API endpoint. This is a, a specific protobuf API webpoint. So we can't just open up a browser or a postman and point it at this thing. 
What we can do is create our own programs with the product of product I set up and use those as a client. So let's take a look at that. I have made a little console program. And inside that console program, I have copied the same proto buff file, which is the same specification. And then inside my program, I'm doing a bit of code. I'm saying, okay, talk to that HTTPS address. And that really is for querying the system. When it actually does a real request, it's not going to go via HTTP. It actually uses HTTP 2. And part of the proto buff protocol is for careful manipulation of headers and um, content after the end of the request, which makes it hard to do um, from any web layer because the uh, web browsers just don't give you that much control <coughs> over the HTTP requests that are going to and from the server. Or not HTTP 2 anyway. But we connect to the server. We then grab the client. And that client has been, where is that client? I don't think we have to do anything. The client is just generated for us from there. And we call that get weather function with an empty weather request. And then we print it out. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to start that application. All right, so I've started that up. I'm going to create up a console. And I'm going to kick off that client and see if it works. That's it, that connected and ran. Not an amazing example, but the thing to point out here is it's doing this connection not through a normal HTTP REST API endpoint, it's using gRPC server to server, to server communication. And so it's a, a new way of doing things and recommended for high volume server to server communication. So if you've got a, a farm or you know, you've got, um, but in turn, maybe things like um, anything you're using an event bus for, maybe you can make a really fast connection between your servers. Um, really good. It's a what's, question. What's the authorization slash security sort of on that? Um, yeah, and that's an, uh, so the question was about authorization and security. I know that's another reason why they added that new endpoint system in there. So because they came in here, and where is the startup? Because they came in here and overhauled this new endpoint system, which gives us a place to attach stuff to, we might even be able to go, there you go. Yeah, so this really shows you why they went to the, the effort of adding this new endpoint system on the end of, you know, we had routing for MVC and that worked fine. But they took a step back and had a new endpoint routing system so that they could put configuration on gRPC endpoints and onto, uh, uh, what's the middleware endpoints, and onto SignalR. So yeah, it's, it's that, that simple to, auth to authorize it. That's a good question, a good answer. Fantastic. All right, I'm going to sum that up and move forward because we're getting towards the end of our day now and we've got uh, some great things to show you before we're done. So in summary, so gRPC is a new remote procedure called library built, um, started with Google, but now available from .NET 3 onwards. So .NET 3, .NET Core 3, has the ability to, to act as a gRPC server. It uses HTTP 2, and um, it's faster and more strict than JSON. So you've got that well-defined endpoint. JSON is kind of anything you can serialize the string, and as long as JSON Java can, JavaScript can read it, it's good enough. Uh, Protobuf is a bit more strict about that. It certainly has more number types and more correct uh, integer types and that kind of thing. Um, it allows streaming connections. So you can make a connection, leave it up, and actually stream data as it's available. Um, but for now, it's server to server only. There is a technology called gRPC Web, which is intended to push the whole gRPC thing out to browsers. But it does require a proxy server to make it work. And it looks something like this. So you've got a gRPC backend here that could be Go, Java, C++, or C Sharp now. But in order to have that talk to your browser, you have to have a web proxy in the middle that basically takes gRPC calls and translates them a bit to put the gRPC stuff in the body of the request. And then you've got a gRPC web library for the browser that can then deal with those not quite gRPC requests. 
So there's quite a bit of infrastructure required to get gRPC for the web to work. So I wouldn't recommend, as soon as I saw this, I'm thinking, great, I'm gonna throw away JSON and REST APIs, because that smells too much like JavaScript. But no, <laughs> not quite there yet. <laughs> Is there a theme? <laughs>